guys and gals. This is Doug from Two Rebels Off Grid. We left the city as fast as we could into the heart of the desert down here, the high desert, where we are attempting to make a living, a life change here in Cochise County, Arizona. Uh, in the last video, you guys saw us cobbing the chicken tower. This entailed putting mud, straw, water, sand together and plastering the entire building with about two inches of mud. This was to act as a grip barrier to connect the plastic hyper adobe bags to our final plaster layers, which is gonna be made of lime. Uh, lime tends to attach to dirt and mud and sand a lot better than concrete does. If you're having issues with cracking that, it's probably because you're using Portland instead, which is not a breathable material. Lime is a breathable material, and this is why they've always used it. Um, these buildings, these earth houses, these natural buildings use lime so that the, it breathes, so that even if it gets wet on the outside and absorbs a little bit in, that uh, aeration helps to dry it out as fast as it can. In this video, you're going to be looking at our scratch coat, our lime plaster scratch coat, which we are attempting to put on uh, as fast as we can before it rains or anything like that, uh, before it gets too cold. Because lime is, you want to use it 40 degrees and above. Um, you can work with it in 40 degrees, but in if you have consecutive days of freezing, it can alter the chemical structure of the lime. So it's best to get this done in warmer days. Um, if you're new to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe and you'll see lots of interesting videos that we are going to be putting up. Uh, but in the meantime, in the background, we are putting up the scratch coat of the lime plaster. This is the first coat, it's rough. Uh, it's about a quarter inch thick. You don't wanna go any thicker than that. Lime likes to go be applied in thinner layers than Cobb does. Um, we're still using that mixer to mix it all up. Uh, the ratio that we're doing is a seven, which is seven parts total. So three parts lime, putty, which is a slaked lime in water. Water, uh, lime that's been soaked in water for several days. The longer you soak it for the better. Back in the middle ages, they would soak it for a year straight. A ratio of three parts lime putty to four parts sand and probably two parts water. I see how, how it's falling in the mixer and that determines how much water I need. I want it to kind of just not adhere to the ceiling of the mixer when it's spinning. I want it to drop to the bottom every time it turns. So that's how I know if I have a right mix. But we've been putting this up. It took about three days and then I went up on the roof and I had to do that too. And that was another three days to do the roof. And that's only because I had to level out a lot of the, the slumps that are in the roof. This video, I'm not really gonna talk too much about it. Uh, we brought you to a ghost town building earlier, a few videos ago, and I showed you uh, the dissected side section of a building that was built here in the 1800s, back when the cowboys and uh, you know the gold, the gold prospectors and silver prospectors were here. And they built the buildings out of local materials. So the sand here is perfect for it. Um, you could see in the dissection how thick they applied the lime and then how much they put the plaster on. And so right now in this video, this is that quarter inch lime plaster scratch coat. In the next video, we'll be putting on the smooth coat. And then the video after that, we will be doing a lime wash tinted with natural uh, pigments. But until then, we got this video for you. <laughs> Those buildings withstood many, many years. The only reason why I think that they're not even standing anymore is because the silver ran dry. 
they basically abandoned these towns when all the mines were, were cleaned out. They left them, they left them to the natural uh, elements and they slowly deteriorated because our weather out here is pretty extreme. It makes sense that it wouldn't last that long. However, people that are occupying the building would have uh, patched up places that the water might have deteriorating the lime. Uh, there is a maintenance protocol for doing this style of building. The lime wash would have to be applied um, every two years is what they suggest. And that's basically the waterproofing. It fills in all those uh, little air pockets in the lime and keeps penetration from happening. I am down here in the wash because it is another breezy day. You wouldn't think of it by looking around, but it's pretty uh, dead air down here in the wash. And that's why I came down here, if you just wanted to know. We get lots of offers and by sponsors. We're gonna be honest with you here. Out of about 10 sponsors that will mail us products to do reviews, we decline 99% of them. And when Cow uh, Cow, which is a boot company, they make extremely competitive boots that are very nice. I'm wearing them right now. Um, when they decide to send us something, my other boots were getting pretty shoddy. So I was like, yeah, let's try these. We'll do a video on it and I'll give an honest review. So we unboxed these boots when they got to us. They sent us one pair, size 12 for me. And uh, coming out of the box, they look nice and sturdy and brand new. And uh, they look like something I would wear normally. You guys know me, I'm a boot guy. Uh, you look back in the videos, I have like 10 pairs of boots that I wear throughout all the videos working around the homestead. I thought that living in the desert, I'd be like in sandals and that. It's not the case. We need something sturdier. We need it for different types of elements. We get mud here. We have sand here. We have rattlesnakes here. We have scorpions. We have all the insects that want to bite you. And so I like having something that goes up quite high on my shin. Uh, Cow Cow sent us these boots. We unbox them, nice and brand new. And I immediately put them on and I said, okay, let's not do a video for a few weeks on these things. Let me wear them around and uh, we'll give an honest review. Three weeks in and I don't see any scratches. They're made of rubber. They're made of a rubber and a polyethylene of some sorts. So this is like an insulating, uh, insulated boot, waterproof, watertight. I don't see anywhere where the water could get in. If you stay to the end of this video, guys, we're gonna give you a discount code on these things. And like I said, we don't promote just any type of thing. So I'm quite happy with these boots. Um, very awesome tread on them. Uh, very thick sole that would keep mesquite branches from busting through there and getting through your foot. Um, I like wearing them at night, especially because it's warm. They're warm, but not too warm. Like right now it's daytime and my feet are breathing. They're very, uh, they're not sweating. They're very sturdy boots. Um, I just slip them on when I want to go out and I just kick them off my feet. I don't like messing with laces and stuff like that. This is the perfect desert boot, in my opinion. I also lived in upstate New York. We get 30 below zero weather and snow. I bet you these would be, if you put on a couple pairs of layers of socks, these would be the perfect boot for anywhere in this country, I imagine. Not just the desert, guys. But uh, yeah, cow cow. I've been wearing them around. You'll see them in the video. I wore them up on the roof, I wore them in the wash. I haven't really taken them off except to go to my other job there in town in Tombstone. But uh, we just felt that this is a good product. This is one people have asked us uh, suggestions for footwear out here in the desert. And I would say if you're out here working, working hard every day, these are the boots for you. Um, they're competitive with all those other uh, primary name brands out there 
but I don't see a difference with them. My other ones that I spent 200 bucks on, this it all shed it off and, and fell off. And these ones, I mean, I've, granted, I've only worn them for about three weeks now, but they are, I'm loving them. And I suggest that you guys probably take a look at them. And I'm not going to give you a bad review unless it is a bad product, right? And I'm definitely not going to give you a good review on these boots if they were bad. Uh, but yeah, I love them. Uh, I'll probably buy another pair actually even after this. And I should mention that these boots are slip proof. Slip resistant. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to the to the lime plaster layer that you've been seeing in the background. Um, what is lime? Lime is a bicarbonate from a burnt stone, as far as I can recall. Um, here, you could burn caliche, which is a, a stone that's from sedimentary, uh, from back when there was oceans here. It was crushed seashells. The seashells got uh, compressed into a hard layer just beneath the surface here. And we can pull that up. We can fire that in a furnace and smash it up. And it would be the same bicarbonate that we buy at the Home Depot or the big name box brand stores. Check the prices there too, because there's something going on where some weak Lowe's will sell a bag for 14 bucks and Home Depot will be 28 bucks and then vice versa the next week they'll swap and I don't know you can call me a conspiracy theorist but I always check what the prices are and try to get the best deal it's the S type lime um, it is it can be an additive to Portland cement to make it more plastic to make it more smooth when you screen it out um, but we are using it solely as our binding material. Come on, Clara. Come on, Luna. Sometimes the cats like to walk with us. Luna. Oh, I hear a kitty. Where's the other? I hear another kitty. I don't know where they went. I heard another kitty. Oh, it's Chaka. <laughs> Come on, Chaka. Come on, Chaka. Often when we walk, the cats come with us. Clara doesn't usually come, though. She usually stays with her babies, but here comes Chaka. Chaka with the fluffy tail. Come on, Chaka. Come on. Willow, don't chase the kitty. Come on. It's okay. Come on, Chaka. Come on. Come on. All right. As you can see, busy, busy, busy. We've got our first coat of lime plaster on the wall. And today I have to go up upon that roof and do a second coat, which is gonna be a more uh, lean coat. It's gonna be almost half and half lime and sand. And then when I'm done with that, then I can do a more leaner coat. But yep, there's definitely is a process to this. As you can see, it's pretty white, but it's actually an off gray. We bought a pigment. We're going to try that out. Um, we kind of like the way that it was brown with the cob on it, and we kind of want to get it back down. We want to tone this down to a more off color, not so gray. Although, that's what really turns a lot of people off on this style of plaster, is because lime is white when it dries that's why when you see in the mediterranean uh the bahamas stuff like that all the buildings are white it's because they use lime uh, but we're going to tone ours down but we're not there yet we did get everything covered that's going to get covered with plaster i feel already better right here is a scratch coat that's to help assist with the second coat to attach and here I was in a race to get to work so I actually did this side and didn't scratch coat it 
So we'll see what happens when you don't scratch coat. Hopefully it sticks anyways. Uh, it's just a big experiment like we've been keep emphasizing. But yep, it's getting there. We're loving that we're at this stage. Uh, I really need to get up there, get that coat done up on the top of the roof so that we don't have as much water seepage. Um, evaporation is a real thing here, so even when the water soaks through the lime, by the time it gets to the other side of the lime, it is, has evaporated within an hour. And I believe that that's what, why they use lime out here is just because of that, the fast drying. Uh, these are completely breathable buildings, unlike any other type of buildings where they seal them up and then we put in artificial air conditioning and such. We've decided we're not going to plaster the inside yet. This is something we'll probably do in the future. Right now, it's more important it coming to winter that we get our stuff in here. So it's really important to get this roof done so we don't have any drips. Um, and the inside isn't really that important to have it plastered. We could leave it like this indefinitely. And there's somebody sneaking up on me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move scaffolding. It is what binds the sand together. And basically our lime plaster is straight up lime, sand, and water and nothing else. Uh, we put that on, we put a, we take a piece of metal and we put deep fissures within the lime plaster layer so that it will have, so the next layer will have something to attach to. Um, you don't want to smooth out this, this layer. You want it to keep it very rough with your spatula. I guess you can work from the bottom up or you can work from the top down. It doesn't really matter as far as I've discovered so far. Um, why are we using lime? We are using lime for the breathability I had mentioned already and also for the rain resistance. It, the rain will typically bounce off of it until it gets oversaturated and then it will soak and evaporate. It won't disintegrate like the cob layer like you saw that happening. Um, when do you want to apply the lime? You want to apply it on sunny days, but overcast is really a good time to do it also because that sun will dry it out very fast. And that's the one thing with lime is it needs to be continually sprayed down as you work with it, as well as the wall underneath. The cob has to be, be fairly saturated with water so that it does not pull the moisture off of the layer of lime that you pull. This is what happens if this is dry and this is wet. When we put the lime onto the cob, the cob will pull the moisture out of the lime and cause cracking. Now, cracking is not something to be worried about on the scratch layer, and actually it's expected you are to have cracks in it. And that's fine because that gives you like a polar opposite of where we are causing uh, ridges with the scratching. The cracking actually will allow that second layer to have something to grip into also. So it's being gripped from both directions like that. It will take, take about maybe a week to plaster this building with that scratch coat and and we've found that it's very easy to work with. It sticks fairly well, and uh, and it hasn't been falling off. It's very strong so far, is what we've found, and uh, pretty happy with it so far. I was kind of scared, guys. Not gonna be, uh, not gonna lie to you about that. Uh, I was kind of scared. Never used this stuff before. I've only read about it and nobody's really using it anymore except these alternative buildings out here and other places in the world but we are going to conclude this video our next video like i said is going to be the smooth layer of lime and 
we hope that that goes on well too. We did a test sample and it's looking really good, guys. We're, we're pretty happy about what's going on with this place and we're summing it up. So it's, uh, we only have about three more videos to do for this chicken tower. And then we are going to go on to other projects, maybe the house. And we are going to put on the back burner, the interior of the chicken coop and the chicken run. Those two things are going to have to wait until next year sometime. So we will pick up that chicken series, the chicken tower series later on. Well, we know that you guys are getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of it, but you know, it's just, it's probably a good series to watch from beginning to end. If you guys just stumbled upon this channel, uh, lots of really good videos and lots of, uh, things that are explained that you may have questions about, but like we said, we hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We hope that you subscribe to our channel and we're really hoping that you um, check out these boots. Just go to their website and you can use our discount code and get a deal on them. Uh, we didn't, I don't think they're that expensive. They're not as ex expensive as the other comparative boots. Go to the store, check out the, we got your discount code for you waiting. Go to the website and read up about yourself and read the reviews that people leave there. Um, like I said, we don't do a lot of product reviews. This this boot here, I believe, is worthy of a product review. And we're going to put out a, a singular video which only talks about these boots. It's going to be a short video, but it's going to be dedicated just to these boots. So stay tuned for that one. And uh, we hope you guys stay cool or stay warm, depending what part of the country you're in. And we hope you stick around, wait for that next video to come out. We'll see you guys.